Joining me now, retired Admiral James Tabridis, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander and author, author of the new book, a novel, The Restless Wave. Congratulations on the book. I can't wait to read it. Admiral Tabridis, you. you write in Bloomberg, quote, that the potential for a wider kinetic conflict hasn't been greater in decades. Um, we're certainly seeing it, feeling it, and the U.S. doesn't seem to have any real influence over what Israel will do. I think we have very limited influence at this point, unfortunately. And you see that the Biden administration has tried so hard, and I give them great credit to try and get to a ceasefire in Gaza, to try and encourage another ceasefire with Hezbollah, to try and uh, encourage the Israelis to take a, a, another measured response. I just don't see that happening at this point. Um, Israel is going to hit back and hit back hard, and then the ball will be in the Iranian court to see if this thing does turn into a wider war. It's very worrisome, Andrea. Well, Iran says that they will retaliate, so then you have tit for tat, tit for tat, and by definition, you could end up in a wider war. Do we know what Netanyahu's endgame is? Is it to take out, like, I'm not sure they could, they could not take out the nuclear program without U.S. help, which the U.S. has said is not forthcoming. But they can ding it. They can do things, you know, to slow them down uh, in terms of attacking some of those sites, even if they don't get the, you know, the underground fortresses. Yeah, your analysis is spot on. I think there's three big potential target sets here. One you mentioned, the nuclear sites. The problem with that is very hard targets, 25 locations scattered across Iran, which, by the way, is three times the size of Texas. Uh, number two set of targets would be the military industrial complex. Uh, here, I'd go particularly after the ballistic missile production facilities. That would be quite proportional to the attack that they received from Iranian ballistic missiles. And number three, the energy facilities go at the economic heart of Iran. I think that's the conversation occurring in Jerusalem right now. Nobody knows which way uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu will ultimately decide. But I think it's it's quite clear this is not going to be a, a light tap on the brakes to Iran. It'll be a significant strike. I would bet on him going after the military industrial complex. Can't rule out uh, an attempt at the nuclear or at the energy. And if it is the energy sector, as we were just discussing earlier here uh, with Del Douglas holtz Eakin and Mike Froman, um, there's a lot of overcapacity right now in energy, and the U.S. and Saudis are prepared to ramp up production if they need to, but it still is destabilizing. Is the U.S. military prepared to protect and perhaps um, escort ships through the Strait of Hormuz, for instance? That's the key question. There is uh, plenty of additional capacity to make up for whatever gets taken off the table by strikes against the Iranians. The worry is that Iran would then turn around and try to close the Strait of Hormuz. Andrea, they do that with mines, they do it with small boats, they do it with uh, cruise missiles, potentially use submarines, particularly in the deep water at the far end of the strait. They have options. Could we stop them? Ultimately, yes, but it would uh, drag the United States and our allies directly into confrontation with Iran. Uh, boy, let's hope we don't end up going there. And final thought, um, we had this exact scenario in the 1980s when young Lieutenant Commander Stavridis was on a Navy cruiser. Uh, the Iranians know those waters well. If they tried to close them, there goes 35 percent of the world's oil. I don't care how much overcapacity there is in the system. Oil prices will go well above 100 a barrel at that stage. And one top official here told me last night that President Biden is basically in a political straitjacket at this point in the campaign, not being the candidate and not having leverage with Netanyahu and not really being able to put pressure on Israel. Uh, I think that's uh, unfortunately a fair point to be made. What he does have is some pretty good 
lieutenants out there, if you will, uh, Secretary of State Tony Blinken, Director of the CIA, Bill Burns, uh, Jake Sullivan, National Security Advisor, very experienced former General Lloyd Austin over at the Pentagon. He's got some strong players in those cabinet posts. He'll deploy them. He'll try and control events as best he can. But as you and I agreed at the at the start, not a lot of real direct influence the U.S. can bring to bear here. Admiral Stavridis, thank you very much, and congratulations on the book.